Hi, this is Ellie Tom Elamine, and this is Christiana Elatron. <coughs> and we're on a breatharian journey. And here we are in Aloria, in Ostrabon, India. And this is the great, what is this called? The Shiva Linga. That represents the male penis, and this represents the female <coughs> vagina. But it's bringing in that male energy and that female energy coming together. And here we are exploring these beautiful caves in Ellora in India. And this is a high energy cave. Now today we're going to talk about the Breatharian Aura. Now Aura also means your area. It's the area that you cover. Most people is just into their physical body um, on the area that it covers, the space that you occupy. But you have inner, other energy bodies that come off of you, so you occupy a lot more space than what you think. So when you're dealing with the breatharian aura, and we tell people about the breatharian journey as eating very, very little or none at all, it's about, the food is about 10% of the journey. The rest of the journey is about the aura, your aura or the area that you cover, and you bring a more light into that area. How do you do that? with a behavior and a lifestyle, because life is all about relationships. And also mostly not only about the relationship to others and the relationship to yourself, but what we're talking about now is the relationship with the whole planet and the places you touch. And your auric field expands always and touches these places and has an impact on every area of the planet that you go. So basically when you, for example, go to these sacred places or any power place in the world or just a field or a garden, you have to be aware of how you touch that place with your emanation. What are your thoughts? What are your emotions? What are your feelings? What are you imprinting on the land and in these sacred walls? We came to these sacred walls with an intention of prayer and honoring the space and blessing the place as it blesses us back. And one of my jobs here, <laughs> as all over the planet, is to enhance the energy of these places and clear it and clean it and bring it to its highest potential Absolutely. and connect it to the other places on the globe that have this power and this emanation. Absolutely. And we are here to do this as light people as being beings of light but mm -hmm. also as divine beings in human form so we must be aware of that also. absolutely and what she's talking about that's very powerful because she understands that her aura or her area goes beyond this physical body she's actually affecting the planet which all of us are but when you bring more light into the planet through these relationships look at those beautiful statues thousands of years old right behind us this is a beautiful place. Yeah. Just it's, look at the whole place, very sacred spot. It's actually a very, very ancient site. It has been built by civilizations which were very advanced, very powerful. And it's, it, it's carved out of a rock in, inside the mountain. So the mountain is holding this place in its embrace as this temple has been a part of the mountain before. So it's. It kind of looks like it's not man-made, but it's, it is actually built with the mind power of um, beings that knew about how to create things and deconstruct and reconstruct molecular structure and how to work with prana. Because you see, with prana, you can impact fields and impact with your auric field the things around you in such ways that even matter can change. Absolutely. And it can reshape. And also your body can reshape and rewind uh, and transform with the power of prana so that it gets from denser, from flesh, it can get to a higher, higher vibration. It can get to light vibration, to Absolutely. prana power, and still be in the physical body. Absolutely. So, unlike the ancient tradition of India, for example, that thought that you have to transcend the body to have this ability, now on this 5D reality that we're building on Earth, we have this power to transform the body and the molecular structure and be here in our highest aspect without having to That's leave awesome. 
the physical structure. Absolutely. It just builds into a more etherical, more prana infused. Mm -hmm. And we do it all the time. Now body listen at this. Yeah. All of us have an aura or this area. In science, we call it our electromagnetic field. One time I was with this man, and he came to me, and he was just focused on his first field, which is the physical body. So he made it look good, and, but there was something about his aura that somebody could read. It was kind of dark. Now, even though he had the nice Mercedes that we look at in this world, uh, he took me back to his house, really nice house. Now, most people would get stuck there and say he's very successful. He's very healthy. However, as we began to meditate, his mind could not stick in meditation. Well, of course, everybody goes through that, through the monkey mind. But there was something else taking place. There was other problems that was bringing darkness within his body. Now, listen at this. It wasn't long before his ex-wife showed up, and she had some things to get off her chest with him. So that was on his mind. This is a true story. Then his children came. They had some things to get off their chest with him because he didn't spend enough time with him. Then his girlfriend was there. She wanted to talk to him. Then the landlord of the house, because it wasn't done paying for and also his business, they were both looking for him. All of these problems was going on in his life that he created. And what it does, it was blocking more prana coming to his life because all of those things I just mentioned is relationships. That is the thing or the core that actually feeds the human being. The physical food is child's play when you're on this journey. I tell people all the time, you might not have the right uh, lifestyle you created. Straighten out your lifestyle first to get more energy into the body before you start letting up on the food aspect. Because a lot of people just want to let go of the food aspect and that's just a small portion on what you need to let go of on the things you created in your life. That's nourishment. Absolutely. So after that, it's all about the emotional patterns and the mental patterns and the way we interact with the world and the people around us and the relationship we have with the people around us, especially the closest one, are the things that are impacting the field, our field the most. So once you heal these relationships and the emotions you have with the people, you get more prana in your body. Once Absolutely. you heal the things that you feel guilty about, or the things that you thought you're not doing right, or the things that you thought must be changed, the, uh, the way you think about it impacts the way prana flows in your body. Absolutely. And feel that awesome sign. <laughs> after that, it goes way bigger, and it goes to your uh, house, and your city, and your country. And you have relationships with that places, too. And then you expand back to your continent and your planet. Absolutely. And you have a big, huge relationship with that too that is impacting your auric field. And then you <laughs> grow bigger, and you do grow bigger we with do grow prana, bigger. then you impact a lot of other places around Absolutely. the planet. And you are intergalactically interacting with your spaceship friends maybe, Absolutely. or other planets, or the way you're interacted with the sun, for example. So people always say, I want to find out my life destiny, live in the light. <laughs> That's the only thing you have to That's do. That's all you got to do, That's live. Simple. Get these relationships. You can straighten out your household, straighten out your neighborhood. You can change the city state that you live in just by living in the light. The best teacher is a teacher that lives by example. Always keep that in mind. It ain't so much what you say, it's the impact you make of the energies that's coming off your field. So don't be discouraged if you do got things that need straightened out in your life, because it's not about good and evil no more. We don't need that word. Absolutely. It's about imbalance. And anything that's imbalanced could be balanced out again. And actually, when you get things in your life that show up and you seem to need to resolve them, it's very beneficial. That means you're evolving. That means you're moving forward. Absolutely. That means you're clearing up. That means you're getting to a next stage, so don't blame yourself. You know, people expect masters to be perfect, to not have any problem, right. to have their life all straightened up, all the family, all the kids, all the assets, everything okay. Well, a master is sometimes one that has most challenges right. because he chose to evolve at a very high rapid pace mm -hmm. and in a very um, advanced evolution Absolutely. stage. 
In and other words, everybody's growing. Everybody's going through something. First of all, he has to clear up mm -hmm. everything that he left behind that is not in balance. Absolutely. So if you're at that stage, you're in your mastery. So congratulations. Right. So spirituality, a lot of people think it's about escaping the world. No, it's not. Get back in there, straighten out these energies because it's our job to maintain our aura and it's our job to what? Not only straighten it out and maintain it, but also to help the aura of the planet. Yeah. This is our beautiful planet. It's a beautiful place to be. And this journey actually puts you back into your body, puts you back into true reality, which is a beautiful heaven to live in. And when you get to these type of places that are power places, like pyramids, like ancient sites, like statues of built by ancient civilizations and so on this is to, requires even more responsibility because the field here is enhanced and what you see in the field is going to come back at you real quick and really show you your inner world in your outer world Absolutely. so the more you are in your mind mastery and emotion mastery and energy emanation so that you the your field that you emanate is beneficial for the site right the more you then benefit back from visiting these places and being with them right now for those of you who don't believe you could be food free it's not about that no more we're talking about energy now everybody can say this don't it feel good to be around people of like mind, be around people that y'all really laugh and having a good time. That's the energy, you understand? Just on that basic level, grow from there. And when you go on this, that's your own self-realization. And when you can get that going on all in your life, on every aspect, from the place you work, from your intimate relationships, from smiling to a person that's walking down the street and you start feeling this energy, it is an energy that you can actually live off of and sustain you and it's healthy. The pranic journey is about health. It's a healthy journey. Absolutely. And it's so good you brought up intimate relationships because I'm mm -hmm. so much uh, working on this now with people and um, it's good to be understood that on a pranic journey, the power of Tantra can actually impact and heal thousands and thousands of people just with the emanation of the auric field of a couple that is well aligned. Right. So talking about mission, we don't have to do much, just be <laughs> in harmony and make love. Right, it's so easy. People used to treat a tantric couple like they were the kings of the village. They would always host them and feed them and uh, cherish them. Why? Because they knew that the tantric couple is bringing uh, abundance and harmony and prosperity and harmony to, to the place. Absolutely. And they would actually very much honor these people. Absolutely. Because they knew the power of auric emanation. That's where they get the symbol of the heart from. Those two fields coming together coming intimately together. and that's the shape of your heart. Yeah. It is awesome. The union. Yeah. So we started out this video showing you, what's that called again? And the cave that... The Shiva Linga. Yeah, and the it Shiva always Linga. goes back to that, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so it's more than just a physical sex like that. You got to no. go beyond that. It's the relationship. It's the binding, the coming together, the union with. The harmony of the yin and yang. And it doesn't even have to be physical. Once the auric fields are harmonized between two people, the emanation is amazing even without physical contact and some choose to be celibate like Elitom here and it's perfect because auras are everywhere. Everywhere. And again, we started out this, this video is called the Breatharian Aura, which is your area. And your area extends a whole lot more distance to where your physical body is at. We actually have another Shivalinga here, but it's like more in a obelisk. Um, uh, yeah, right aspect, behind us. But you know, it's so good to see how they connected to uh, the higher realms. And actually, about this temple, what I'm noticing as I step through, mm -hmm. uh, speaking of auric fields, right. even, uh, even physical places like this, even temples, have huge auric fields. Mm -hmm. And this is a, in, uh, this is a mental made creation where molecular structure of the rock was dematerialized and reshaped into this temple right. and this culture. Think about it, it was just a mountain facade before. It was nothing here. So everything mm -hmm. is created in the heart of the mountain, like 
Absolutely. molecules taken out and bringing in these shapes and creating this amazing thing. This is an awesome temple. The energy here is very, very high. The fact is that <laughs> the auric emanation of it builds up all the way to the seventh heaven, very high up in the sky. So this is just the physical aspect of the temple, but its auric field as an energy temple mm -hmm. is much more high up, going Absolutely. very, very high up. Who, the ones you who uh, remember the Lemurian temples, the Lemurian and the, the Atlantean crystal temples, mm -hmm. and the temples that are dwelling in Shambhala, those of you who have visions of that, right. know what I'm talking about. We are in such a place. Absolutely. Those of you who are who are thinking this is juju stuff, no. Just forget about it. We it's just did okay. a meditation earlier down in the cave part. Oh my gosh. It's just a bedtime story, folks. Nothing could be true. Everything could be true, you know. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Don't believe it. And us. if you ever get the chance in life, visit some of these high energy places. Again, even the earth has its high energy centers, chakras, exactly. just like the physical body. This is a living being we're living on. Mm. That's a whole nother level of thought. But when you get into this journey, this is what feeds you. This is what nourishes you. It's already a given. This is why the pranic journey is so beautiful. Yeah. It's and all about you, how this, far you want to take it. This is a big part, actually, of my pranic journey. It has extended from working with people, which I still do, to working with the energy chakras of the planet <laughs> and with energy vortexes like this one here and connecting them and bringing them together in the energy matrix of the planet and <laughs> enhancing them and then Everything that pops into that energy-wise comes right back to us right and back nourishes to us. us and nourishes a, everyone who's ready for A relationship, for give and take. Exactly. So now we want to check out. We hope you got a lot out ah, of this. Thank and you. And this is what it's all about, your breatharian aura. Take care of it. It's your responsibility. And it loves to live off the light, loves the higher vibration. All you got to do is allow it to happen. And Have remember, a nice day. It's so great to be here. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Talk to y'all soon. See you soon.